What's up, YouTube? Hudson Fan 15. Um, as you can probably tell from the title, uh, a little different tone of the video today. Uh, one of the all-time greats of the NFL, one of the all-time greats of the Colts, uh, John Mackey, passed away today. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description box to a very well-written article uh, explaining what John Mackey meant to the NFL. And... It's, it was so powerful that former Colt and uh, great in his own right, Ted Hendricks, actually commented on it. So I'll uh, I'll have you read that um, after the video. But um, to summarize, John Mackey uh, went to the University of Syracuse, played ten years with the Colts, and he changed the definition of the tight end position in pro football. Um, he was a physical specimen and was so talented and was so willing to give up his body for the game that it, it basically paved the way for guys like Kellen Winslow Sr., Tony Gonzalez. He was that type of guy. Um... In a, to me, a, a really unfortunate series of events, he came down with early onset dementia, uh, which got progressively worse over the years, and robbed him of the years in life where he really should have been enjoying the game, enjoying what the game had become, enjoying what his influence had meant to the game. And instead, basically made him a prisoner of his own mind. Um, my grandmother had dementia, and she lived with us for the last three years of her life. We're talking about a woman who was, when she came to live, was 96, and passed away when she was 99. Um, you know, it's hard to tell where exactly it starts because it starts with little things and just progressively gets worse and usually people have a sort of aha moment where they realize exactly what they're dealing with and occasionally it's when something extreme and tragic happens and they somebody makes a mistake that they wouldn't normally make because of this and they end up hurting themselves or somebody else or you know, crashing a car or, you know, leaving a stove on, lighting a place on fire. And it's something that is very difficult to study because it's in the brain. And there's only so much you can test while a person's alive. And a lot of what's known about dementia is learned from analyzing the brain after death. So it's obviously too late to help those people. Um, I'm going to show off what I am honestly disappointed to say is my entire John Mackey PC. I thought I had more. I thought he, I had bought more of his stuff after reading the Tom Callahan book, uh, the John Uni uh, Unitas, The Life and Times of Johnny U. Or uh, Johnny U, The Life and Times of John Unitas, I believe was the title. There it is, actually. I forgot that I had the soft cover waiting to go out to Micah. Johnny Yu, Life and Times of John Unitas, Tom Callahan, New York Times bestseller book. Uh, and, and he's featured as part of that. And, and they talk about it. And after his playing days, he was uh, the predecessor to Mike Ditka, who was also tight end uh, in the National Football League, as a player advocate for the NFL to up their responsibility uh, to the players that laid the groundwork for the guys today to make absurd amounts of money and be huge prima donnas and all that. And it's called the 88 rule because of John Mackey. And so the one vintage card I have of his uh, is a 1970 Tops. And there he is in that number 88 uniform. And I brought out just uh, as a, almost a reminder to myself here to show... Uh, this is a, just a random Marvin Harrison card from my collection. It's a rookie reprint, I believe. Um, 
the fact that the Colts did not retire John Mackey's number is one of, in my opinion, the worst things that they've ever done as a franchise. Obviously, when a team leaves in the middle of the night, it's kind of hard to overlook that. Um, and then some of their personnel moves to me have been baffling over the last 15 years when I've been really uh, into the team and the sport. But um, one of the things that highlights in the article was John Mackey being agitated during the Colts 2007 Super Bowl win wondering who it was that was wearing his jersey and he wasn't doing it you know be because he felt some sort of misguided sense of entitlement he was a good enough player that they should have retired the number is what it boils down to and I like Marvin Harrison and I respect what he did in the league as well but he should have never worn that number um, one of my two autographs of John Mackey is, uh, is a 2005 Upper Deck NFL Legends, and uh, as you can see, he inscribes it uh, both number 88 there, and it's hard to see with the team bag, but also a uh, HOF 92. And the fact that this man played in the uh, this, the late 60s and early 70s, and he did not make it to the NF uh, NFL Hall of Fame until 1992. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Um, I've actually got uh, two of uh, the silver variation uh, 2008 Donruss Classics uh, classic singles number to 1,000, number 688, and 796 of 1,000 of his, and then uh, number 24 out of 100 of uh, the gold variation. And uh, if memory serves, one of these, I believe, was my first John Mackey card out of this set. Might have been this jersey, in fact. Uh, I know I bought this card in Tennessee. It's uh, uh, out of the same set. It's a uh, jersey 24 of 50. I do not believe it's prime. So I believe the prime in that was number 25. However, this next one is uh, 2008 Leaf Limited te uh, Team Trademarks. Uh, prime one color patch for 225. And then uh, next up is a 2010, I'm sorry, 2009 certified uh, Fabric of the Game jersey number 82 out of 99. Uh, all blue there. And then finally, uh, 2009 Playoff Contenders, Legendary Contenders. Uh, autograph, I do not believe this is one of the SPs, unless if somebody knows that for sure they can correct me. Autograph, to round things out. So, there it is. Um, John Mackey was one of those guys that when you hear me talk about the history of the game, laid the framework. And one of the reasons why I love the Colts is because so much of the NFL's history is intertwined with what they did and why this league leans so much now towards the offense and specifically the passing offense because of the work of guys like John Mackey, John Unitas, Ray Berry, guys like Lydell Mitchell who was the first NFL player to ever have a thousand yards rushing and a thousand yards receiving in the same season. And, uh, you know, having a team like the Colts, the modern era Colts, that have been geared towards the field on which they play to create that vertical passing attack. And why, you know, Peyton Manning accomplished what he's accomplished and such. But, um, I will leave you to it. Let you read that article. Feel free to comment. Uh, on what you, uh, what if anything you know and appreciate about John Mackey, about his influence on the NFL, and uh, just generally anything else with uh, NFL history uh, that you feel is relevant uh, to this uh, very small, very humble tribute. And the one thing I will close on is a lot of what John Mackey struggled for was simply recognition. 
recognition that there were players out there who who had struggled, sacrificed, and uh, players like him for who for many years were overlooked uh, based on politics uh, because he was so outspoken. And um, so this is this is one small bit, one single fan's recognition of him many years later that uh, unfortunately comes posthumously, but also to go you know for all the other players to get the opportunity to meet any of these retired players, express your gratitude for what they've done for the game. You know, where where is obviously where it's relevant. So there are a number of guys that are still active and will still sign and do memorabilia shows and card shows. Uh, make it a point to not just you know, get your get your autograph or you know, and, and you know maybe snap a picture and then that's it. If you're sending through the mail autographs to some of these guys, include a blurb about how you know something about them and what they did and that you appreciate it because of what it's meant to the game today. Alright YouTube, peace.